your Kaiser isn't doing anything in the fight, then that means that your front line is going to die faster than Fnatic's is Oscar in it. <laughs> Solo kill available for irrelevant! Flash for flash! Hyper, hyper! First blood! He's yeah, basically not okay. Just got flash. One shot. Nice, nice, nice. W from Resort gonna try and mitigate that engagement. So that SK go back to the oh, fantastic. That's you, but I take it out. Flash away for now. Sirs is buying time thanks to stopwatch exit kick. Looking for the assassination. He finds one. Looking for the second through the exhaust with the help of irrelevant. They do it. Welcome back to the desk as SK Gaming takes the first game here against Fnatic. And guys, I, I want to have your rough reactions here because. Coming into this series with the current forms of both teams, I would have thought that it would go the other way. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Fnatic were on an absolute tear. The bot lane looked completely unstoppable during the best of ones. Uh, but everything expectation-wise got blown out of the window. It was just crazy to see. Also, not just like in which team was winning, but the drafts were a complete turnaround to the best of three we just saw before, where it was all of a sudden all into the scaling elements. Yeah, and I was also surprised because Fnatic chose red side for this game. So far today, we've seen every team choose blue. Even for the next game now, Fnatic chose blue. Chose blue sorry. So mm -hmm. when they chose red for game one, I thought they had something up their sleeve, something special. Uh, but, the they, <coughs> yeah. but they blind picked top on three and they went for Seri on four which to me makes no sense because you, you could easily go for AD carry on three and have your top lane pick way later and actually get a good matchup because you you had relevant actually take over this game and I think that comes from the draft and it should not happen on red side. I also feel like just looking at some of like the OPs that SK got, Kaisa, Tristana, the Maokai, like there's just so many great options and especially when you are looking at both the Kaisa and the Maokai and like the poke options available because this is a very slow drawn out game, not a lot of team fights, mm -hmm. not a ton of engage on the Fnatic side either. It allowed that when they started dancing around things like the Baron, the poke from the Saplings and the Kaisa Ws just to continue raining down and we saw that actually resulted in SK taking the Baron virtually uncontested from a fight from Fnatic's yeah. side. Well, we'll see the adaptation on the set of Fnatic for game two, but here, first, I want to ask you, we thought Zeri was dead. Is it dead? Is it a misunderstanding of how the meta works? Or do you actually think this champion can work still, Reckless? I wouldn't play it myself. I was surprised to see it. I thought they would maybe pair it with an Enchanter on five, maybe f uh, for a Lulu on five, it would make sense. But with a Brom on five, I think a Filios would may just, yeah. be better, just be a better champion. And I also feel like maybe this was Noah's First game, the split where he wasn't necessarily an outstanding player. He did, he did okay in his lane, but after that there was nothing to it. And I, I don't want to put too much on him either because I feel like this team comp, as you said, it was them getting kind of poked up, poked out, having no engage to deal with that in any way, losing side lane to relevant. So options in the game were very limited. It was that kind of uh, draft where you see the Braum, the uh, the Azir, the Poppy, and it's like, okay, this is a great comp if they can be on objectives first and sort of like have the enemy team come into them. That's where they're really going to be able to thrive, you would imagine. But in order to get that, you need to either have a lead or have some way to generate priority. Uh, and it just seemed as though that was not going to be the case, mm -hmm. especially because Irrelevant started getting like solo kills on the top side, so all of a sudden you can't have the Jacks going into a side lane using that prio to, to run in and and generate push for Fnatic. Yeah. Uh, Irrelevant just took out or even got a solo kill later uh, up against the Azir, which is just ridiculous. I honestly think it's really interesting because we know how good Irrelevant can be on the Jax. So of course he would know how to play against the champion here, Reckless. And Jax is the kind of champion that if you put him behind early, it's really hard to recover with. Yeah, and I, I think um, I went quite hard on Exa before the game because he was the reason why SK was doing well and also the reason why we're, they weren't doing well. But this game Irrelevant showed that he can be a carry for his team. X actually stepped up towards later stages, but this this game was all Irrelevant. And yeah. he did that from a position where he wasn't necessarily, necessarily getting resources, he was making the plays on his own. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about uh, Exact Kick and Dust and how Exact Kick had been underperforming so far and how he was a crucial piece in this SK gaming lineup when it comes to carrying. Do we think he's back to the level we were expecting from here? I mean, I think he had a good game. It, it, this is a tough game to judge yeah. it off of, I feel like, because was there an actual team fight like at the literal very end very when end, they yeah. already had generated a massive lead? So it's a little bit hard to say like he's fully back or anything like this. What I will say is that I really liked his aggressive ult. He had a lot of ult where he would ult in, not necessarily like finish off a kill, but like mid fight to get damage. Here at the end, of course, he finds that angle and makes it happen. But I just thought the, the moments he chose to look for the engages with the Kai'Sa were really, really clean. And uh, even though they didn't always generate kills, they made sure 
sure that Fnatic was going to have to run from that point onward. It is nice to see him not getting caught so much. I feel like this split was him getting caught on yeah. repeat pretty much every game he played. In this game, it was much better, not getting caught, doing fine in the laning phase. So a big step up, I think, in terms of sure. just how they were playing individually. And just from the game they had in the last game of regular season to now, you can see a clear improvement. And he's the kind of player who needs confidence and this confidence boost to perform even better. And I think grabbing this win, the way they got it against Noah, who had been performing so well so far, I think it's going to help SK uh, going to the second game and focusing on this one. What kind of adaptation do we want to see on Fnatic side first as they chose blue side? Well, there's two things I'm looking at. First of all is like the Kaisa priority like going over to blue, that seems to be like one of like the go-to to sort of snag up for yourself. So it would not be surprised to see that going into the hands of Noah or being stolen away. The second is do Fnatic all into like the scaling comp again, or do they have another look up their sleeve? Are we going to see something a little bit more similar to the, the series we saw earlier? Because I think they have the players to do it, right? They've played like very aggressive duo lanes in the past. Uh, you know mid jungle can, can get active. So Fnatic as a team, I feel like are going to be a team that can show multiple looks here in the best of three, and that might be a good pivot going into blue side. Yeah, I would like to see some more aggression. I feel like Seri Broma here is a kind of dead bot side, and I don't think they're in a position where they need to play that kind of style. Mm -hmm. They're very good in the early game, maybe the best early game team we have in the league, so I would like to see some more aggressive picks on the support and mid roll so they can actually make something off of Rasorx pressure. And we've been talking about the meta and how we would benefit some team and not the others. And we had the discussion around Trimby as well, mostly being known for his enchanter play, uh, champions outside of Rakan, of course. Uh, how big of a hit is it going to bring to Fnatic the fact that we had this patch change and maybe impact the meta more than we thought it would? I didn't think it would actually be that big of a hit, but seeing how they drafted in game one, I'm a bit worried because I feel like they didn't really know themselves what they were doing, to be honest, in this draft. It sort of seemed like they prioritized the jacks way higher, higher than it needed to be, ran out of picks in the bot lane, so sort of just scrapped something together, and I don't think that Seer is a priority over the Tristana. In my mind, as you mentioned earlier, like Tristana, Kai, Samokai together on one side is a lot of good picks yeah. on one side, so I, I would not I'm a bit worried, yeah. I would not do it like this, I think, in, in the next game. I would try to get more power picks and just more aggression on the bot side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like even though it is a melee support technically in the Braum, that's a very different look to an yeah. All-Star Nautilus Rel, something like that, looking to like very heavily initiate towards fights. So I think that is a leaf that we see need to see turned um, to, to show that extra element to Fnatic. Now, when it comes to preparation here, because I think it's, of course, an aspect that's going to be important coming into this crucial series. Uh, when you look at Fnatic and the way they've been playing in the best of ones, being challenged, but also being super dominant is the fact that they have not been able to play from behind that often going to be an issue for them in the preparation they had and overcoming these issues? I would say maybe. So I actually don't think it's even about being behind. It feels like they sort of panic in the game. You actually saw a stint of it this game where Jax would TP in to the Nash way too early. It was 10k and I think they even had vision on the Nash so there was no reason to TP that early. And then off of that TP they just started Nash. They knew they had, no, they had no other options. They were kind of in a panic mode and they knew nothing else than to start the Nash. And we saw the same play in the last regular season game against SK where they randomly started the Nash, got aced and lost the game. So I wouldn't have, uh, I don't think it's about being behind. Mm -hmm. I, w I wouldn't have that as the worry. It would be more just the shot calling in the team feels a bit too panic to me. Sort of like if something goes wrong, we have to do something quick to recover instead of just stabilizing and chilling a bit because actually the game was not in that terrible of a state this time and neither was it last time. Yeah, I, I will say in, in terms of them not generating early game leads where I'm kind of looking is top lane like Oscar that was a little bit odd like he was been lights out I feel like for the majority of this but he's been really really solid for the team so the solo kill a little bit mischaracteristic uh, mis not, it's not him. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the same time, I think Razork has been so fantastic uh, too. So I, I'd like to see him be able to find a little bit more angles. He was trying to like go for repeated invades, like see if he could get a good timing against the Maokai. Never quite found it uh, yeah. for him, um, but that's definitely something he's going to continue to be looking for. When you look at what happened this year uh, on the side of SK, they're now 4-0 over Fnatic. Fnatic who changed lineup, who changed players. But what does it say about SK maybe in, the in terms of confidence going into the second game, the fact that they keep on winning against uh, Fnatic here? We'll see right now, actually, as the draft is just starting. Ivern to open the banning phase on blue side, followed by Jace. Why do, what do we want to see here in terms of bans? 
I would venture Stana now if I'm Fnatic. I don't think they are necessarily looking to first pick themselves and it's not something you want to play against. Um, the double AD just seems really strong together with the facilitating jungler. Almost impossible yeah. to deal with, actually. Yeah, I, I will say too, it's been interesting to see because I feel like a lot of the bans have been the same. Even in our first series, when there was a side switch, they maintained. So Fnatic, when they were on red, were banning uh, both the Rel and the Ivern. And there's uh, two symptoms here. Is A, your prep coming to the weak. You sort of know what you don't want to deal with. But I also think there's not a clear, like, hierarchy in a lot of champions at the top of the meta because we just haven't seen enough games yet on the patch. So the only real difference is going to be Fnatic on blue side picking up that LeBlanc he ban here first. And uh, I think eyeing things like that Kai'Sa for number one. Kai'Sa is very likely to get locked in first. I would just like to see more power picks, I think, from Fnatic. So in my mind, there's a lot of it right now. As you said, kind of the bans are sort of all over the place. Some teams even keep the bans swapping sides, but there's just a lot of power picks. So. I think if you're Fnatic now, you just look to get more of them than in the last game. It feels like it shouldn't be Maoka, Kai'Sa, Tristana on one side, it should be more split up. Maybe take the Tristana yourself here or the Kai'Sa first and then break the Kai'Sa, Tristana combo. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I just seeing the X kick on the Kai'Sa it looked really strong uh, in the last game and throughout the series. So yeah, that goes in and, and then you're looking at, okay, is it going to be a Nautilus next to it and all the star, those sorts of things for Trimby? Because I don't think this is a, a game where you can get away with playing like a, a, a support that wants to sit back, right? The synergy with Kai'Sa's passive with all in supports is just a little bit too strong there. I feel like Trimby is kind of known for his Rakan, or at least when I think about Trimby, I think about this Rakan, and yeah. last game it was banned in the 4-5, so if I'm Trimby this game, I'm probably asking for that to be picked before the bans, because I feel like that's his best meta uh, champion right yeah. now, not necessarily as known for his Rel or uh, his Alistar, but his Rakan is really good. Yeah, there are ideas, so take it away from the Zai, and that gets shown on the opposite side as well. I'm still thinking mid lane, Azir, Tristana, seems like it might just end up being a bit of a handshake mid lane matchup again, uh, with both teams having similar ideas. That's what we saw back in game number one. Uh, but it was actually Humanoid that prioed the Azir over the Tristana last game. Maybe that ends up changing, but uh, he's, a, he's a bit of an Azir enthusiast. The only difference this time is Certus is maybe not as keen uh, going for the Tristana as last game because they might like AP here. It's hard to find an AP top laner guaranteed 4-5 with Rumble out as well. Sure, four, and you don't have the Kai'Sa to do yeah, the AP Yeah, and you damage. don't have the Kai'Sa, so might might be the case that they skip the Tristana here even though it's a very powerful pick. We know how good he can be with the Akali here, so maybe that's going to be an option. I don't know if... Uh... This gives them Rakan Saya yeah. angle or just going for the Brom. I think Brom is decent. Maybe not the best against us here, but good against Nautilus. Actually, I would probably not pick support here. I think I would go for something else. Maybe a secure your mid laner before bans and then take support on four because you have multiple support picks. I will say Brom would be kind of nice here because you have an idea of like playing back, but it does sort of limit your engage options. So the Zaya does end up coming through from DOS. Get to see him on that in the bot side. And now we need to look like more towards the top side of the map. Last phase, there was like the Renekton ban coming in, uh, targeted over towards Irrelevant uh, from the side of Fnatic. Um, but with so many things open, like the the Nar, the Jax from the last game, it's possible we go into that again. But I think there might be a little bit more idea to try and, and find some some dive champions to pair up with these supports. So SK's idea here is just to ban blind pick uh, blind picks on the top lane because Oscar will have to blind yeah. uh, with Irrelevant taking five pick on red. So Renekton is a good band, decent decent blind on this patch. Um, next could be maybe an Orn. We could be looking at uh, maybe a Gnar actually that Irrelevant played last game, but Irrelevant has to counterpick this this game. And that's how I think Fnatic should have drafted in the last one. This is a very common red side draft strategy where you just leave the last pick for top lane. There you have the Gnar band as the next blind pick in order for Oscar. So now what is Oscar gonna blind? It's a tough task actually to find a blind here and getting counterpicked with potentially having Poppy Jungle against you that's running rampant yeah, in the already. I, I wonder if we just get into some kind of like Scion situation on the top side of the map and they can play completely away from that lane, focus on the Kai'Sa down in the bot lane. Wouldn't be too far away from something that makes sense there. And uh, a Jax ban, I think, opens up the idea of playing a little bit more just towards the tank on the top side, not having to worry about deal with the split push later on. Should be mid lane more, locked in here. More disengaged tools for SK? 
I mean, Relevant has been a fantastic uh, Gragas player in the past. The nerfs have hurt its laning phase quite a bit. Uh, the extra cooldown, I think four seconds on, on the sustain from the passive, uh, which is pretty meaningful because you're pretty just spamming spells up in the top lane matchups. In How did I called you it! Know? I called it because... That's Cert ridiculous! Certus, I think, production, please help me here. I think he's eight and one on Akali this year. And we know that it can be a good matchup against Azir. So I saw Certus having confidence. I was like, that's an Akali angle. That's that's <laughs> tough. I, I feel like there's there's still so much like CC that can be shown right now. You have like the Nautilus to, to sort of peel against that. Might not be the easiest team fight to navigate, especially if Razorik does go the Sejuani angle. Six what and do you one blind top mistake. now? Scion. It's gonna be the Scion, yes. You're probably gonna get Gwen here by Irrelevant. So uh, Irrelevant will have another chance to carry this game as he did in the last one. Now, do we think Gwen can be a good angle here, or do you, would you I mean, the, the enemy, like, Fnatic frontline is so uh, big, I feel like Gwen would have a great time trying to shred yeah. that Again. down. Yeah, you're going to have too much fun, I think. So this is normally what you see from a red side draft, where you get yeah. the heavy counter pick on top, and then perhaps the more solid slash uh, aggressive bot side from, from Fnatic here. So much more aligned with what I think a draft should look like, and I feel like this is going to be Maybe Fnatic taking over the bot side early game because Akali is not that strong. Sarokan loses that lane to Kai'Sa Nautilus. And then SK having irrelevant on Gwen to potentially carry them through this game in a good matchup. Yeah, I think this is going to be this is going to be a game where team fights become somewhat hard to navigate for both sides. I think Fnatic have, of course, really strong front line. They're going to try to play with like the range of the Azir turrets. But both back lines have fairly decent peel. So uh, it's going to be very important. Certus and Relevant are finding their moments uh, before they actually decide to go all in here. And do we think SK can take it with the draft they have? Oh, Fnatic, can they come back here? Um, I, I want to know, where should we keep our eyes on in the early game, especially if you had to pick one matchup that's going to define the entire early game? I would say bot lane, yeah. Bot lane? Kai'Sa Nautilus versus Sarah Khan is a matchup we've seen now for a couple of years, actually, and it's pretty much always decided level one or level two, depending on how the trades go. So I think that's where I would keep my eyes. I agree. <laughs> you agree? Oh, well, thank you. We'll see if they can make it happen. Fnatic had everything during the first phase of this summer season in the LEC. SK was struggling a bit, but it, it, oh, it looks like they're managing to come back here. We'll see if they can close out the Series 2-0 or if Fnatic can come back on this one. Take it away. to Summoner's Rift. Game two between Fnatic and SK. And Certus is Akali, predicted by law. It is his third most played champion. He got LeBlanc in game number one. Uh, correction, Kaisen game number one. Oh, why am I so out of it? Tristan. And you know, people believe that I'm a Nocturne enthusiast. Yes, but? But um, I haven't played that champ in like three years now. I abandoned him in favor of uh, Akali. So I've now been religiously playing Akali for three years. They're saying fa la la la. Oh, fanatic. There are some, there are some SK fans. There. <clears throat> this, this competition happening here between the fan bases. What I will say while they're chanting. I'm going to bring the mood down just a little bit and create a little bit of a somber moment. Because with Fnatic losing that first game, I want to talk about the stakes and the impact that this is going to have for Fnatic's chances in just a moment. Talk me through the early game while I figure out what's happening here. Well, for those that don't know, the way that our season finals work is that the winners of each split auto-qualify and then the remaining spots are granted based on championship points. Um, so we have three splits. We have winter, spring, summer. And those are the championship points that you briefly saw on your screen. Uh, that was the standings. <laughs> that was the standings. Oh, that was the standings. We're having a little bit of a technical uh, difficulty in terms of the championship points. But the point still stands that basically Fnatic didn't get a lot of points. They really don't have many at all. Which means that for them to qualify for the season finals, it's not an easy road. Is it Trevor? It's not, and I will just try to simplify it. Obviously, if they win summer, they will make it through. And for second, third, and fourth places, obviously those percentages will diminish. All right, while we're still working on those graphics, we'll come back to that in a moment. 
Let's take a look at the early game. Reminder everyone that Oscar got an early lead in game number one. And then Irrelevant just turned the entire tables on the entire game. He became a gigantic side lane threat. He was playing weak side initially, and then became the lead sort of pressure point because of that advantage. And with the Gwen and the Akali, SK could play uh, two similar strengths this time around. For sure. Um, irrelevant in the straight up 1v1 matchup, you can see he's starting to pull out Oscar. Not a lot that Oscar can really do, especially when you get level 3, the E and the Q are low from Irrelevant. It just offers so much power in the, the straight up trading. So it makes a lot of sense that Irrelevant will have the push, and Marku also pathing towards the top side of the map to cover him. Mid lane matchup, um, the reason why Akali is especially in Europe, is considered a counter to Azir, is just the amount of mobility that she has uh, makes it so difficult for the Azir to really deal with her. But that only happens later on into the game. You know, she kind of needs around level 10, 11, when she's got Q maxed out and when she has two points in her ultimate, then she becomes a much greater threat. Until then, Humanoid is just going to keep bullying her out. Around level 6, there will be a window um, where Surtis will have some kill threats, but it very much depends on... Uh, how Humanoid plays the lane, and he's an avid Akali player himself, so I imagine he won't allow that window open for long. Third most played champion of all time, 28 games out of his 250. I mean, that is a gigantic percentage, and a 70% win ratio for him. All right, let's take a look here. Do you think any shenanigans are afoot as Marcoon could be coming in here behind Oscar? <laughs> flash yes. is over. The wall will be able to charge heroically. And not just yet. Oscar got the flash out before the double. You should get the city. I'm surprised Marcoon didn't just throw that out immediately. Yep. Looked like he kind of hesitated for a second. I wonder if he was paranoid about Oscar's third Q or not what it was. But Oscar was able to flash away to safety. The wave is slowly pushing towards Oscar. Keep my eyes on Razzle here. He's just going to choose to go back to base. Oscar is going to do the same. He knows that he has TP. Everyone's going to calm down, chill a little, and uh, reset. And you can see where we looked across the boards in the bot side of the map. You know, and Trivi falling a little bit behind in the two versus two, but nothing too significant. Uh, and in the mid, small advantage game. All right, we finally got a chance to just quickly set this up. All right, Fnatic fans, please pay attention right now. If you look on the left of your screen, you'll notice that Fnatic have 60 championship points to SK's 120. You have to go deep in playoffs you know, to get a chance to season finals. Vedias was explaining this a little bit earlier. I would like to show you exactly the amount of scenarios in which this will work out for Fnatic. So in a moment, on the bottom of your screen, take a look at the percentage scenarios. We've got some major lag in the software right now. It's just messing with me. But TLDR, Fnatic need to make a minimum of fourth in the summer playoffs. And if they do, in 2.8% of all scenarios in the universe, if they place fourth, they get to season finals. So again, these are percentage of scenarios, yes. right? Which is not like the percentage chance. It's uh, basically Tony Stark looking at Doctor Strange yes. and putting a few fingers in the How air instead of scenarios. one. Yes. yes, exactly. That is exactly what it is, quick shot. And so basically, Fnatic... Oh, hang on a second, Trippie. Right. We've had enough graphics for today. If the system's wasting a lot of time, what we do <laughs> see is the dredge line not finding its target this time around. And Fnatic off to a small start. I think a little bit to be expected. Um, small advantage in that middle lane, and once again, Razork off to a little bit of a, a storm in the at farming game. You good? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> just this, just, it really gets on my nerves, and I can't get that out. But we got the point, and that's the main thing, is that because of the fact SK have had better runs throughout winter and spring, they're in a stronger position to make it to the season finals. And after game one, um, silencing a lot of fans, even here in Berlin, the SK supporters, they are here. That wasn't intended as a taunt. <laughs> that wasn't I was going to say, were you deliberately taunting no, the Fnatic fans? it wasn't. And well, SK once again off to a strong start. Look, first objective, uncontested Dragon here. So it's just going to be just fine. So we saw Oscar in it while the Dragon was being secured, drop a control ward in the top side jungle. Observers are highlighting that for us now. Razork, knowing that Marcoon has just secured that Dragon, is going to steal away the Raptors. And uh, he has a 20 CS lead over his jungle opponent. Razork has been doing a great job of finding farm where he can, stealing away enemy camps. And this is just try and true for Razork now. He loves invading. Loves being in the face of the enemy jungler, keeping track of what he's up to, where he is. He did it in game one. Didn't really result in anything significant. But now we see Trimby on the move, and he has his eyes on Marku. All right. Won't be able to find anything just yet. Krug's actually going to body block any potential dredge lines. Numbers advantage in the top of the map. Oh, or Fnatic. All out from Oscar. 
Whatever, it's literally just gonna hop away to safety. Start going snip, snip, snip. Chucks out the needles for work, and here comes Razork. Vodskarinin's in trouble. The Q buys time. The stun locks it down, and Fnatic first blood. Wow, Razork with the Sejuani passive, helping out Oscarinin at the last moment to help secure that kill. Marku looking to interrupt. All right, hit him with the buckler. Be able to find the damage, Oscar easily walks away. I yeah. thought he was going to chase a little bit more, but yeah, Fnatic on the board first, and a thousand gold up. Now, the person that suffered as a result of this was Noah in the bot lane. Exekick and Doss did the correct thing, recognizing that the jungler was on the top side of the map and Trimby was missing. They zoned Noah away from a lot of farm. You can see him down now 14 CS, uh, and this will result in about a 400 500 gold lead for Exekick along with a couple of plates, but Fnatic overall leading in gold off to those advantages that Razork had been able to build for himself. SK though, smart play here, knowing that Razork needs to reset, have an opportunity to secure this Herald and can look to funnel more gold down bot. But we look back at this 1v1, Oscar Rinnin knows that his support and jungle are top side of the map, so he looks to make a play. Then two champions that were recently released do a bunch of stuff <laughs> that to the surprise of many means that they can just sidestep everything. Dashes upon dashes upon dashes, but it was that passive from Razork. Oscar in helping apply it means that he gets rooted, and then Razork follows that up with the ultimate. That's the only situation where you can apply that double permafrost uh, and walk away deathless. So good job there from the Fnatic top jungle. They find themselves with first blood. And that means that that small advantage on the top half of the map, minus CSZ for Humanoid Nasca, kill going the way of Razork. You called it up, Exekick has got a very small lead over Noah. The waves have been trimmed out for now. And as we approach 10 minutes, we're two minutes away from the next dragon spawning. That Rift Herald is once again in Marcoon's back pocket. And he got, uh, SK got both Heralds in game one, if I recall correctly. Yep. We've got the first one here today. And for a team that demonstrated great early games um, on the side of Fnatic, great control, a, a lot of uh, aggression in their play, SK have come in with drafts that have been good. They've executed well. And I think a lot of credit yet to sort of Marcoon, and as well as how the entire team has played around the laning phase. Let's see where that Rift Herald's gonna get dropped because for now, Marcoon's making his way towards mid. So, the key difference between game one and game two for SK, hang on, Marcoon looking for something. Yeah. Not gonna find it though. Yeah, so the key difference between game one and game two is SK Siege weaker. You're not running double lady carry, you don't have a Maokai this time around. Hitting a tower and setting up around With an objective. Gwen, Poppy, and Akali. It's just, it's harder. And you're, you're reliant on your solo lane as actually being in a pretty good position, right? You ideally want these champions, you ideally want these champions to be slightly ahead of their opposition or to play around those first item spikes and you want them to have resources funneled into them, if at all possible. But I'm very much expecting this Herald to actually be thrown towards the bot side of the map, towards Exekick to try and accelerate him. Which does mean that when you look at these neutral mid games, it is just going to be harder for SK to execute when you compare that to Fnatic's composition of two frontliners in the form of Nautilus and Sejuani. You also then have the Cassante creating chaos with Humanoid and Noah just poking away and chipping at the HP bars of SK. Called it. Rift Hill drop bottom. Cassante creating chaos is, uh, looks like Oscar was going for a little bit of push there onto Irrelevant under the tower. Farming between lanes. One plate secured top, three plates secured bot. Trimby and Resort were able to at least push Dos Marcoon and Exekick back. One and a bit plates left remaining. With now potential pressure onto Certus, but there's enough backup coming in here. So still minor gold leads. And I really like the highlight, Vedi, that you're talking about in terms of Certus and Irrelevant. And how ideally you'd want them to be in that stronger position. But look, Certus is still coming online. Level nine for now. There's only 100 gold behind, 10 CS down, which is very good job so lane, yeah. very good in the lane. Has a little bit of presence from Marcoon, but we want to see him now accelerate it, pick up that tempo, use the kids, and, and try to generate an advantage for yeah, himself. Yeah, it's not that as an Akali you need to walk out of the laning no. phase with like a bunch of kills or a lead. It helps if you can get those, but... Um, Neutral at this point is fine. It's more that like when you get those first items, um, well, SC is going to have a lot of poke at his disposal, and uh, ideally, it's Akali's strongest points. You want to take advantage of that. Doss has found Noah. All right, that's a knockout. Noah's still got Exhaust and Flash available to him. Resort has managed to find out Marcoon. The W down, and Noah gets another kill for Fnatic. Second of the game. Dredge Knight catches the birdie, but there's no further follow up. The prison was used. So just teleport to the mid lane. Irrelevant doesn't have his available, but there's another fight. Doss, why did you go back in? Because you're a con. You can fly right back out. 
and just to avoid any follow-up CC. Princess now goes forward. Emperor's Divide finds the little boop. That'll be enough to interrupt the dragon. And this is becoming a little bit of shenanigans inside the pit. Resort, no ulti. We'll be able to just Octic Assault forward. Certus looking for that execution. We'll be able to dash away, dodging the dredge line. Dragon secured. While that's happening, Oscar trying to do Cassante things. Dashes and flashes and shrouds and needles. And this one time, nobody dies. Oscar in it, though, with a clear health advantage in this situation will force it rather than back. But frankly, a big misplay from SK in the bot side of the map. They hard overcommitted onto trying to get a pick onto Noah. But while the engage from DOS looked promising, the follow up just was not there from the rest of SK. And Fnatic were quick to punish. They converted into another drag. Well, they converted into their first dragon. But SK doing what they can to get something back. First tower of the game goes over to Exekick. 1.1k gold lead in the AD carries pockets. I mean, how do you make sense of this now? Um, with Zaya being that far ahead, good sign. But surely you would ideally, with a Gwen and a Kali, want that lead or want that pressure elsewhere? Well, right? it, at some point, Gwen in this matchup will flip. At least, I think. Cassante's a weird champ. Yeah. Um, <laughs> theory. I mean, in theory, you know, like irrelevant picked Gwen into Cassante because it's a good matchup, right? And at some point, Gwen should scale to a position where she can uh, beat out the uh, Cassante in a side lane. Akali, with now this uh, proto belt completed, should now win. Surtis now has kill threat. He wants level 11 so that he has the second point in his ultimate, which he should get off this wave. But now he has kill threat in side lane. So SK is slowly getting to a point where their side laner should become a bigger threat. I talked about the level 11, and you see a humanoid's like, yeah, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> um, so uh, he doesn't want to run the risk of that. Um, so really, it comes down to like what Fnatic want to do with this point in time. They should feel stronger if they want to try and force fights. But I guess the more that I think about it, the more I realize how OP Kaiser is. Like, her scaling is just so strong with the AP build. Annoyed? Well, instantly caught out. Beautifully done. I mean, so that's the worst that case scenario. That's beautiful, right? <laughs> that is the worst case scenario for an Akali. Fnatic doing the right thing. Just attack one of the side lanes. Create a disparity between the two mid laners. SK doing what they can to cross map in the mid lane. You can see the collapse coming through from Fnatic now. They're not done yet. They're not done yet. Engage comes out, forces the flash. Trimby goes in, and that's going to get at least one back from Marcoon. Three kills to zero, 1,200 gold up. I mean, Humanoid just scoops up Surtis. He gets put on ice, sent to gray screen, and that's another kill in the bag. One for Noah, one for Trimby, and one for Razork. And they do have control. I think what Reckless was saying on the analyst desk in terms of how game one felt a little bit like panicky at times from the Fnatic members. This time around, they're sort of patient in control, and they're dictating the tempo. They're dictating the well, flow of the early stage. They just have weight. They have Nautilus and Wani. Yeah. So starting a fight is just a so hundred easier. times easier than it was in game one. Which just, uh, it gives them a lot more agency, right? I mean, you can actually start to fight. Yes, this. you can actually. And that's what they've done, right? They've been able to find picks across the board. Three kills now for Fnatic. Second Herald of the game to SK. That's four out of four now. All going into the pockets of SK. As Fnatic did secure that top tier one tower earlier. They're now going to secure the tier one in bot. And with the pressure they have, they can keep pushing this in if they want to. I don't know if they want to overcommit to the tier two tower. Uh, Akali doesn't take towers quickly. Oh, this is smart. All right, so they take the bot tower, TP top. They know the dragon's not for a minute and a half, so Oscar Renan can catch this wave, push it out, reset, and then be ready for dragon. And this time around, it's Oscar that's 1,200 gold up. Uh, a near inversion of the previous humanoid. Emperor's divide into Razork's waiting hands. That buys some time for humanoids to use the sand soldiers. I think a teleport was interrupted. That was canceled by Cassante in picture in picture. And Irrelevant is taken down. Fnatic across the map playing well. Observers highlighting for us Oscar Renin doing work on the other side of the map. Irrelevant committed to that play, thinking that he had assistance on the way. But with that interruption, he was in a two versus one, and Fnatic found themselves another kill. I mean, look, I know Oscar got the prize and saved Fnatic's life, but an Emmy should be given to our observers. That was phenomenal picture in picture work to highlight it. The fourth kill secured now, and that gold lead grows even more. Dragons up in 30 seconds to boot. So Fnatic looking a lot stronger, and it's, I don't know how many years I have been casting this game. When teams do not have a form of engage, it is so much harder to do anything. And you see, if you turn nameplates off, you'd think it was a different squad piloting these champions for Fnatic Game 1 to Fnatic Game 2. 
an RFK gold lead for Nata Cav. They're now sieging onto this mid tier one, the last outer tower for them to secure. And SK doing what they can to hold the line, but the dragon is the main focus. Fnatic push that wave in, Oscar Rinnan joins up with them, and you see that multi-step plan now coming into place. They still have their tier one alive in the top lane. The vision is slowly being cleared out. And this Akali is just a little weak right now. Let's see if SK can do much. Fnatic should feel so surges. strong. I can hear the members of Fnatic yelling and screaming. Trimby is a loud individual trying to thwart off the pressure. Surtis is coming from the mid lane. Keep your eyes on that mini map. 2,000 additional combat gold for Fnatic. The engage comes in from Dark. The Sand Soldiers are forward. Surtis is scooped up by the Empress Divide. No one's on the back line. He's got himself one. And Surtis is running for his life. Oscar will find it with the all out. Two for one thus far. And now Mark Kuhn's trying to get the damage back. Noah's trying to keep the dragon aggroed, but it's extra kick. The most fed member of SK that picks another one up. Two for two. And Irrelevant is pushing Fnatic out of the pit. SK coming back to the end. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a one team fight for SK. They were the initial, um, well, they were the initiators of the fight, I should say. And uh, it, was, it was a close fight. I kind of want to watch exactly what happened because I thought that that was going to be a clean fight for Fnatic. The fact that they kind of reacted and could shut down Surtis right from the start of the fight made me think that they could turn it, but now Ranswalk is looking for more. Well, can he find? Teleport coming in. The relevant still got Flash. Snip, snip, snip. Shroud keeping him alive for now. Needlework is on cooldown. Snip, snip, snip. The battle boar needs to run away. And Relevant's able to escape, but now Marku. No poppy copped up. Heroic charge forward, a buckler to the face, and one more auto. Ultimately, it's Humanoid that gets punished for that, and he TP'd in. Yeah, a bit of a messy round out to the fight for Fnatic. SK find another. SK still behind in kills, but they're keeping the gold close. As you already said, Exa Kick right now has to be the carry for the team. Let's look back at this play. So it's Oscar Renin who tries to catch out Darcy, sidesteps it, knocks up, re engages. Then we see the hook connect onto Darcy as well. Akali tries to come in from the flank, immediately gets chain CC'd. Oh, but Irrelevant and the Feathers actually do so much work onto Fnatic. They find themselves at half HP. And then Irrelevant finds Noah off on the flank, forces him out of the fight. Moly. Look at the picture in picture. Look at the damage from those feathers. You can wow. it out in the replay. Yeah, Under I didn't see thousands. it in the initial fight, but Yo, what, what the kick? What the? Uh, 20 minutes in. Again? SK are on it. Timing wise, if they got it. Remember, Humanoid just used the teleport. Oscar's starting his off into the pit. That's Trimby booting away to safety. Oscar and Razor stepping forward. 1600, 1200. It's SK with another 20 minute Baron. They've gotten up for now. They've escaped. They've done it again. <laughs> They actually do it back to back. 20 minutes in, and they just force the Baron. I'm stunned. Again, like coming into this series, I, I was literally telling quick, it's in my notes. It was like, oh, we got to watch out for the Fnatic 20 minute Barons. Back to back games now, SK have done it, and they've caught Fnatic completely off guard. Another tower will go to Fnatic. But SK, the gold still in Fnatic's favor, but uh, they are not going down without a fight. And with the Baron empowered uh, side laners now for Gwen and Akali, look at this 1 3 1. Irrelevant immediately pushing top into the waiting hands of Humanoid. No one is matching Surtis just yet, and there's no teleports either on the side of Fnatic. Whereas both are up for SK. So this is a fantastic uh, uh, window of opportunity for SK to pressure. Also, in a couple minutes' time, when Baron starts to run out, uh, they should be able to potentially set up for this next dragon. They've got two already. And if they end up getting an Infernal Soul with the comp that they have, this is a terrifying team for Fnatic to be staring down. So we reset. 21 minutes in. The gold is pretty much dead even. And you then start to look at the itemization. Oscar Rinnan, two items completed. Feeling pretty good. Razork, two items completed on jungle. He's been involved in every single one of Fnatic's skills so far this game. And basically, you know, I could run down all of Fnatic's roster. Two items completed across the board is the TLDR. <laughs> it's, the, it's the summary. So right at this point in time, Fnatic should feel stronger. But there's no objective for them to play around. SK are just trying to get as much gold as they can, try and spend it ahead of this dragon spawning soon. I think Sirtis is going to be a little off, though, before he can actually complete his next major item. Does have the stopwatch, which will help him. But uh, Exekate working towards what I imagine will be the LDR. Sitting on the last whisper for now. 
Man, SK Gaming pushing potentially ahead. Uh, if they are able to close this out, it'll be the first time they've ever beaten Fnatic in a best of series. Oh. Yes. Wait, but didn't we look at the... Was that just a game score? It was 6-2, <laughs> to two, was Correct. it? <laughs> they played in the Spring Finals of 2014, 3-1. And they played Spring Playoffs of 2021, 3-1. And they've never faced off again <laughs> in best of. Wow. This is the third time that SK and Fnatic have played. And SK, SK would be undefeated against Fnatic this in year. In 2023. 2023. Potentially as well, be one of the final nails in the Fnatic coffin. Because Fnatic need to get to a minimum of fourth place and hope that Doctor Strange and the MCU is on their side. <laughs> because they need that eternal timeline. For now though, it is still Fnatic with a kill advantage, a minor gold lead. And by no means is this game over. But I think when you consider SK with the sixth seed coming in, they had looked fairly lost throughout summer. Yes, they did pick up four wins, but it wasn't convincing necessarily. The way they've opened up and handled these two so far is a surprise to me at least. So there's the Kaiser poke that we were yep. talking about. And this is gonna be the annoying thing that SK have to deal with is irrelevant pushes in top lane. So it's just getting collapsed on. How's he gonna get out of this? Not the flash, not the shroud. Side steps one, the vision, nice. the perfect execution and the belt. My word, literally he's almost the entire kit just to do so. But look at this, while that's happening, Mr. Relevant is on the top lane. He will secure at least one tower. It will be traded. Dragon is open. And it's Fnatic So he's got a base TP. Surtis doesn't have ulti now. And this is an important fight. Oh, Fnatic inside the pit. Noah's W was blocked. 7,000 hit points on the dragon. Look at Doss, looking for the flank. He's got the flash, he's got the quickness. And he wants to bring Fnatic down, make them feel oh. sickness. That's a kick away. And all of a sudden, without Oscar, Fnatic got jumped on and collapsed. Doss gets the ulti across and Surtis finds Humanoid. Finds Resort, the dragon goes down and another kill secured. SK 2000 up, dragon number three, and stamp authority in the mid game. Barcoon just removes Oscar Renin from the fight right from the get go. And with such a powerful frontline eliminated, SK can just tear Fnatic apart. Great execution once again from SK, and they've swung the gold lead in their favor. Beautiful play, and I, I know that Irrelevant's parents are in the audience today. They need to have a word with their son and get him to change his name. It's relevant. Uh, fantastic play from the entire team, of course. But jumping and getting that tower now. SK are up six towers to four, six kills to six. 3,000 gold up. And that uh, Akali, that was kind of It has the ult. This champ is useless without an ult. And I mean, to be fair, he doesn't do a lot in this fight. The, the real playmaker here is Marku, and that ultimate was so big. Razork then goes in and realizes, wait, my front line's gone. We've got to disengage and then look at the damage here from Irrelevant. Melts so Humanoid. Huge. The engage from DOS is good. And then Surtis flashes in with Exekit completely untouched. The whole team can just kind of chase one target after the next. And uh, Irrelevant is very quickly getting to that point where he is going to be very difficult to deal with. I forget exactly. I think it was the game against G2. It was Irrelevant on Gwen where he was monstrous. And it was actually... It was when he TP'd into mid lane and then G2 just killed him that G2 then came back into that game. But the reason why I referenced that game is just another example of how terrifying this player can be on this champion. We talked about it during the regular season. I'm going to say it again. I think he is one of the best performing top laners that we have in the league right now. Um, and Irrelevant continues to make his presence known. And of course, with the changes that we're seeing on 1313, um, Everybody yeah. stepped back. That was what I wanted. Yeah. Yes. That is exactly what I was hoping for. When I saw how many of those snips in the needleworks, I asked our producers to bring up the damage from that last team fight. And you just saw it. I mean, Relevant got, what, all that AoE across at least three members of Fnatic? It's so funny to me that the only damage Markun did was Poppy ulting Oscar in, in a way. And, 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 ir and, like, and ironically, without that 118 yeah, damage, <laughs> then Irrelevant couldn't have done what he did. So for Fnatic, it is now starting to feel pressure. The engage is out, Irrelevant zoning everyone away. Empress Divine whips completely. One, two, three members down. SK dunk on Fnatic. SK with five members alive. Fnatic with only two. The Baron is up for the taking. And SK are making the upset a reality. They are dumpstering Fnatic right now. The first time in the organization's history will they win the best of three, best of series. I mean, like it's the third time, so it's a bit of a uh, embellished statement. More importantly, 
This would be the fifth win of 2023. So what's irrelevant here on the flank? Comes in from the blue buff angle and immediately dives onto the back line. Absolutely no protection as Trippy is locked up. Irrelevant with the sidestep on Humanoid's ultimate. And he just gets chased down. Razork fail flashes over the wall. And SK clean up the fight, get themselves a Baron, and now five and a half K. The Fnatic fans were so optimistic. Coming into this, the analysts were all saying they believe that the clear favorites in our league are G2 and Fnatic. Expectations were that the, the true El Clasico of G2 and Fnatic would finally be reignited. No one was expecting this SK to be as dominant as they are today. But they are surprising, they are turning heads. If they win here, they will play against XL on Monday. SK yes. versus XL yes. winners. In the upper bracket. But also, look at the standings now. Every single Vitality fan and Golden Hornet at home is ecstatic about SK winning this. They want teams like Fnatic and ideally XL to drop down. That's how Vitality make the season finals. More importantly though, SK Gaming on the verge of 2-0-ing, picking up the first surprise of the Summer Group stage and putting themselves one step closer to the road to Montpellier in the season finals event. I do need to see more games, and I'm super excited about this because right now, this case 6K gold up. As long as they don't get surprised, they've got the 1 3 1 activated, they've got the uh, empowered minions for now. You can see Razork looking at it, but he's going to get through the Banshees. Gonna deal with that first. Noah's coming. Trimby's coming. Irrelevance the target. Pop the bubble. Look at the minimap. Pressure in. Killer Instinct forward, again, buying so much time. Base is opened up in the middle for SK. Irrelevant will go down, but at what cost to Fnatic? Tower is gonna fall, Inhibitor's going to fall. SK have opened up the base. Uh, not the worst for Fnatic, but they need to defend top. So the important thing is the Dragon spawning in about five seconds time with Irrelevant dead for 40 seconds. SK just want to do as much damage as they can. Overstaying here is dangerous. Trimby on the flank. Charge, depth charge. Razork's going in, no prison available to him. Won't be able to escape. But SK right now is just trying to buy as much time as possible. By keeping pressure on top, they're basically buying time for Irrelevant to be able to TP back into the fight. They just have to avoid actually getting into seconds. a fight with Fnatic. 20 seconds, prison's not available, but the depth charge is. Where is Trimby? The engage comes up first, to look at the needles. It is wrecking Razork! Sirtis sends his regards, but Cassante does Cassante things. Oscar's got at least one back. So far, two, four, one in the fight. That means that at least they've done enough. They've done enough damage to Fnatic to secure themselves the soul, unless Fnatic are feeling real bold. But that is not what was supposed to oh. happen. Humanoid now thinks that he can catch Sirtis. Trade of flashes. Humanoid, though, committing the ultimate means that with the soul up and available, Marcoon's going to start that one off. The situation that SK just found themselves in is if they had chosen to reset after losing their bot laner, it would have been, uh, they would have lost the dragon, they wouldn't have been able to contest it. Fnatic are doing the, they're kind of forced to try and find a fight here because they know that they have the numbers advantage, but no one humanoid are too far away. So SK just commit onto the three members and with their numbers advantage, they actually walk away. The victors in that small skirmish, which now means that with no one alive, Fnatic can't contest the soul and SK have been able to secure it. Well played by SK, they did the right thing in that situation, and it's netted them so many more advantages. Now they can wait for the ban, or they can continue their siege. I think the smart thing for them is to just maintain vision control around the top side of the map, keep mid and top pushed in. Irrelevant doesn't have TP, so ideally they want Sirtis on the bot side of the map, but just pushing in mid and top will do for now. And they just play around Baron. Wait for that to spawn. Don't get overzealous. Use that objective to then round out the game, round out the series, and face up against XL on Monday. And Fnatic have got no margin for error. Um, they know that SK is going to come at them. They know it's actually without Baron. It's going to be very difficult for SK to take towers. With Baron, they have to have a flawless engage. Razor, level 13 for now. Humanoid has got that Empress Divide, but no flash. Trimby just looking wow, for just, a target. OK, they're just pushing it. Forcing it. Yep. I mean, daring Fnatic to pull the trigger. If Fnatic start the fight and they get flanked to run around, those initiation tools from the Sejuani, from the Nautilus, they are pretty telegraphed. One Direction. Oscar jumps forward, places the path, make it down, but he's the one that's getting wrecked! The Needles are fired, they just don't find their target. Glacial Prison has already come out, Oscar's running, Razork is running, Sirtis is looking for the execution! But the Shuriken won't find its mark. SK will not find the kill, but they will survive the engage and they'll take another inhibitor. So it just doesn't quite have the damage to pick off Oscar in an SK. Line finds its target, look at that! 
Trippy is obliterated. Is Sin packing? Noah's trying to shoot missile after missile, tagging irrelevant. Teleport coming back in, but Fnatic on the retreat. Then a five versus four supers pouring through the middle lane. And Fnatic cannot stand toe to toe with the dipping, dodging, ducking, and diving of SK's comp. Fnatic are exploding under the power of this Infernal Soul. The damage is relentless. Doss getting chipped away out here by Noah. He's looking for a kill, but the Baron spawns in 20 seconds. SK need to reset. They need to spend what gold they can and get back out on the map as Fnatic do damage control. They need to clear out these minions. They need to get into a position where they can potentially contest this Baron, and if they can, then a comeback is a possibility. But SK are out team fighting Fnatic. They are playing the map better than Fnatic. And Fnatic are beginning to crumble. And bear in mind, if Fnatic lose, they will face against Mad Lions in the lower bracket. And I don't know if anyone was here for Spring, but we've seen that story before. Fnatic begin the Baron. And they find this one before SK look for the initiation. Noah tags the okay. W. Oh. That's fantastic! And the verdict is in! SK are looking for the win. Markoon has been exceptional, and so is the rest of the team around him. Markoon lands the perfect ultimate onto Razork and Oscar Renin. The front line is evicted. Humanoid is eviscerated. And SK is looking to knock Fnatic down to the lower bracket. SK are invigorated. If they close this series up, and they are just about to. In 75% of all scenarios, they advance. If SK beat XL on Monday, SK Gaming will advance to the season finals event. Be one of the six teams on the road to Montpellier. And it starts by killing this Nexus. It means a fifth time this year, SK take down Fnatic. And just a few more kills stand in their way. One, two have already fallen. A third shortly, and as the Nexus begins to drop, SK Gaming stun Europe and silence Fnatic. Exekick is fired up. And I do not blame him. 5 0 this year. SK have not dropped a single game to Fnatic. SK surprised many today, and so much credit needs to be given to Irrelevant and Exekick. Their performance was fantastic throughout the series today. Massive contributing factor to why SK was able to walk away with the dub. A 2-0 performance. They will move on to face XL on Monday. And what a turnaround for SK. <laughs> Go say hi, he was waiting this a bit of a traffic there for the SK players, silencing many of the Fnatic fans. What this means for SK, and of all remaining scenarios, 75% have them advanced. Remember, they have 120 points already going into today. Now that will go up with a minimum guarantee. If they beat XL on Monday in the upper bracket, it will guarantee themselves that season final scene along with the Mad Lions in G2. So that's wow. very exciting. Yeah. More importantly for me, the adaptation to 13-13, the team does look Focus, revitalize the prep time. Um, things that uh, um, uh, Mac was saying earlier in the day around how their team was able to prioritize the prep, the research, the training. It just felt like SK knew what they were doing today. No, they did. And uh, I'm glad that we've got these players on our screen for player of the series because they've all been instrumental. You can vote at LAC on Twitter, Irrelevant X Kick DOS. Uh, it's a tough one for me. I'm leaning towards Irrelevant, but X Kick and DOS with their great engages, the way that this bot lane played. And I think for me, the thing that stands out the most is when we praised SK so much in winter, when they made top four for the first time, it was off the back of this young AD carry, the one yeah. that they were constantly investing in. He was consistently playing at such a high level and people were excited. And in spring, that disappeared. Exekick fell off a cliff. His level of performance just wasn't there. And I feel like today was the first time that we really saw him back in action, back in form with the team around him being at the same level. I think that's the crucial one for me, the last line, the, the team around. I, I really feel like as a unit, SK were just on the same page. I feel like they were coordinating their calls. I think Markoon silently impactful in the early game and then significantly impactful later on. But I also think the fact that the games were slower from Fnatic's side, oh, that yeah. caught me off guard. That I, was very surprising I to almost well. wonder if even like the changes from regular season to group stage, that's not the look of Fnatic I was expecting or anticipating. 
and arguably kind of worked for SK. A part of me feels that while SK changed, Fnatic kind of stayed the same. But you know who can give us better insight? Yeah. F SK can. So let's toss it over to an interview with Trump. I didn't know you were going to do that. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, with me, the victorious Mark Kuhn, and Irrelevant. Guys, congratulations on the win. Huge into starting your group stage. I'm just going to ask you, Makun, how are you feeling? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I was pretty confident coming into this match. I'm pretty sure no one else really expected this outcome, or at least I was browsing social media a little bit and seemed very fanatic favorite. But uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure we're all very confident and we had two weeks of very good scrims, so I think it showed. Talking about very fanatic favored, Oscarini has been doing a fantastic job in the top lane, but irrelevant. I have two clips here that I want you to break down for me, if you will. I'm pretty sure you got two solo bolos on both solo laners in the first game. Do you mind running me through this? I mean, honestly, I think he's just kind of trolling. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's completely chunked and he doesn't have TP and he's jumping into me, so I'm not sure what he's doing. But yeah, that's all. That was a great punish, though. And what about this one? Hey, mercy. Uh, this one. Honestly, when you play with Fnatic, you will notice that every time you get Nash, Humanoid will try to cross map enemy top tier 2. And I called it in game, and he did have TP advantage, and I didn't. But I was sure I was just gonna go there and kill him, and then we can keep sieging with Nash. Honestly, that's lovely to hear, though. You guys seem to have studied Fnatic a lot and know their patterns. Now, of course, you weren't Fnatic's first choice. You have been 3 0 on them the entire year. Every single time you faced them, you beat them. Uh, but Razork was not allowed to pick the team he picked, so that they ended up picking you. How did you feel with that? I mean, I was watching their uh, Legends in Action as well. And I think I heard Trimby saying that we were pretty free as well, so... <laughs> I just kind of wanted to stop them after that. But, I mean, I don't know. I think after they lose to us in the way that they lost at the end of the regular season, I think I, I would have chose, like, the other side. I wouldn't like to play the team that I just lost to, but uh, they tried. And how do you feel about that irrelevant being 3-0 and up and being chosen to play against them again? Of course, in the best of scenario this time. I mean, honestly, I came in today and I didn't really care. I just wanted to win lane. And I think I did pretty good. That's all. <laughs> Indeed, you did. Now, guys, I want your, I want your thoughts because Excel also won today and you're going to be facing them. Markun, uh, ex-Excel player as well. How do you feel about this best of? Yeah, pretty fun. <laughs> I mean, they're getting a bit uh, too hyped, I feel like. I kind of want to, like, get them back down. Mm -hmm. And talking about uh, XL and top lane, Odo brought out Rumble, again, one of his uh, most successful champions as well. Do you have anything up your sleeve for that one? I mean, today I didn't, so we ran it two times, but <laughs> I don't know, maybe next week. In two Actually, days. Actually, two days, yeah. <laughs> Actually, not, uh, <laughs> we never won the first series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'm not, not sure yet. Okay, fair enough. You guys have been studying the teams really well and their patterns. Now, Irrelevant, I've heard that your parents are over here on stage. Is there anything that you would like to say to them? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess, thank you for always supporting me and giving me the opportunity to even go pro. Like when I told them I didn't want to continue school, they were always supportive and yeah, it means a lot to me and I'm really thankful. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much, guys. Now I'm going to do something that I don't usually do. I'm going to say congratulations for the win, and I'm going to leave you right here. Because irrelevant, I have your mom right there that just heard oh. everything, yeah, everything that you just said. Thank you very much for joining me. It has been a difficult year for irrelevant and SK Gaming, but today, he was fantastic, and he thanked you for supporting him on his journey. Do you have anything to say to him? You have never been irrelevant to me. <laughs> that is the best ending to this series. Thank you so much for joining me. Over to you guys in PGL with Exakick.